Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. And we begin with late breaking information. There is a press conference happening right now at Fort Hood on the death of soldier Ana Basel Duo Ruiz. That's right. Her death was ruled a suicide, but the her family doubts very much that that happened. And so right now, for the first time, we're listening to what the military brass has to say about this investigation. Let's listen in. Again, we, uh, we're, we're postured to take quick action, but thank you for the question. Let me, um, let me finish up uh, by saying one thing here. So on the 4th of October, when I took command of Fort Hood, I issued initial guidance to the team. And in that guidance, I told the team we'll do three things. We must do three things in the realm of people. First, we must care for our soldiers, our civilians, and their families. Two, we must develop leaders, leaders who are proficient, who are engaged, and empathetic. And three, we must build teams, teams that are cohesive and inclusive and disciplined. Anna's death reminds us that we must remain committed to these imperatives as we go forward. Thank you again for coming today. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to read out loud. Now, right there, you just heard from one of the military officials, the Fort Hood uh, brass there, talking about the latest information on the death of Private Ana Basaldua Ruiz. We kind of caught that at the tail end there, so we're going to have to gather more information as to what was said at the beginning of that press conference. But, Stephanie, as you mentioned, her death ruled a suicide, but her family doubting that's what happened. We know an autopsy was performed yesterday. Right, and they've been, their family has also been talking to LULAC, that organization. Mm -hmm. that, that organization is pressuring the Justice Department to step in and conduct its own investigation to really give the family some, some peace of mind and really get a final ruling as to what happened to her. So again, we didn't really learn much from that press conference right there, but we are going to update you when we see you tonight on the night beat because we're, we'll get new information by then. Yeah, and something important to note in this case, there were allegations of sexual harassment yes. against one of of her superiors and that's key as to whether that played any role in what happened uh, to this private so we'll stay on top of that meantime tonight the texas supreme court today knocking down a legal challenge to the san antonio justice charter which paves the way for voters to decide on that initiative in a 6-3 opinion justices said that blocking that proposed amendment from the ballot would be interfering with the may 6th election before it even takes place dylan collier breaks down the court's decision Friday morning's decision by the Texas Supreme Court is a big win for police reform groups. Their proposed amendment would expand sight and release to certain drug offenses and crimes like theft less than $750, as well as eliminating police enforcement of crimes for abortion-related care. While city officials contend many of the changes would be unenforceable, opponents of the measure, including the group that filed the legal challenge, expressed disappointment in the wide sweeping proposal moving forward. This charter amendment groups several propositions together under one umbrella, which is a violation of voter rights because it does not allow them to vote up or down on each individual item. While the justices acknowledged potential timing issues with city council's vote to add the measure could be taken up by the courts after the May election, Texas Alliance for Life Director of Communications Amy O'Donnell said her group will ramp up efforts to defeat it at the ballot box. We're keeping our focus on the door-to-door -door initiative, the grassroots initiative to educate voters in San Antonio about the May 6th ballot language, what that proposition really says. But this act will make sure that they are now law. Act for SA Executive Director Ananda Thomas applauded the court's ruling telling KSAT, quote, from day one, this initiative had win after win because it is direct democracy in action and it is what the people of San Antonio want. We expect to see continued wins and success throughout the campaign. Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. An eye for an eye. She doesn't have the rights to be free. It has been two years since the search began for 18-month-old James Chides after the toddler disappeared in 2021. It would take weeks for his remains to be found, and then over a year before his mother, Delaney Chides, was charged with the 18-month-old's death. 
Erica Hernandez spoke to the one person who you just heard from there who's been fighting for justice for baby James as the case against his mother comes up for a hearing next week. She failed James as a mother. She failed James as an individual. You know, she was supposed to be his caretaker and his life is no longer here. Marisol Benavides still grieves for her 18-month nephew, James Chérez. Benavides was the one to reach out to the police when she couldn't find baby James or his mother, Delaney Chérez. A search for the two began in February of 2021. Delaney was eventually found, but baby James was not. His remains were later discovered underneath the West Side trailer where they lived. There's not a day that I don't talk to him. You know, I have him next to me. I tell him good morning. I tell him good night. Um, we talk about him a lot. We have a lot of times where we just sit and watch his videos. Delaney was arrested and charged with tampering with evidence, but it would take more than a year before she was indicted and charged with injury to a child. Now she sits in the Bear County Jail and her attorney has filed a motion for reduction of bond, a request Marisol is upset with. I think that she needs to stay in there. I hope that she never gets out. She needs to suffer the consequences of this. Until Delaney goes to trial, Marisol says she can't move on and find closure. Until then, she continues to fight for baby James. I hope and pray that the justice system does James right, and he deserves justice. Last year, Delaney was sentenced to five years in prison on a tampering with evidence charge involving this case. So even if she got that bond reduction next week, she would still remain in jail. Erica Hernandez, Case at 12 News. Strong winds and heavy flames this morning made things extra difficult for San Antonio firefighters out on the west side. A woman died after a fire started around four this morning at that home in the 2100 block of Monterey Street off of Buena Vista Street. San Antonio firefighters say that as soon as they got there, they saw flames spreading from the back to the front. So crews basically had to be on the defense. And when they once they got inside, they pulled the victim, found the victim, pulled her out. Now, Cruz did give her CPR, but she died at the hospital. A family that lives two houses down says that their surveillance cameras captured that fire. We saw in a video that it was like just a little small fire, like they're trying to warm up. But then the wind picked up and it picked it up and it started to spread with the wooden house. And then it just started growing half a, half a, half a, faster and the people just ran out. So we don't know the name of the victim. That information hasn't been released, but she was believed to be between 30 to 40 years old. Fire officials say that the house is a complete loss and they didn't say how many people, how many other people were inside at the time. Meantime, a two story home in the middle of a remodel was destroyed by a fire. This happened this morning on Pleasanton Bluff near Loop 410. That fire enveloped the roof of the home, but firefighters were able to put it out quickly despite some strong winds being a big challenge for crews this morning and the position of the house's attic, we're told that didn't help either. But luckily, the home was empty. No one here was hurt. Authorities are still investigating what caused it. Look outside with live cam this evening. Huge change. 30 degrees from yesterday. Is that about right, Adam? That's close to right. Yeah, it's a big temperature drop and we're going to feel it even more so throughout the weekend. Temperatures are going to fall off even more. So let's start with the here and now. Most of us well into the 50s, 57 Gonzales and Pleasanton, 58 San Antonio. A few locations still hanging on to 60 degrees, but not for much longer. As we go through the evening hours, temperatures falling off by 10 o'clock. We're talking 53. Midnight, we're at 50 degrees. Increasing clouds. It's going to be cool out there. And then rain developing. That's the key, a cold rain. Morning temperatures in the upper 30s for most of us. That's 37 on the north side of town and even east side, 39 on the south side, Poteet, Pleasanton as well, about 39 degrees. With the increasing rain chances through the night, expect dampness to start the day tomorrow and some fairly widespread areas of moderate rainfall. By midnight, 40% coverage, then we ramp that up to 70% by sunrise tomorrow morning. We'll be back to talk about where we could have a few snowflakes mixed in with that rain, if there's going to be any impacts, and also just how much good moisture we could get from this, along with how cool it's going to last in just a bit. Also, San Antonio first responders went underground in downtown San Antonio this morning to rescue a man who fell into a manhole. Happened near I-10 and Colorado Street. As Karina Weber shows us, he was left with a leg injury and also a story to tell. 
Slow and steady is how things must go for these San Antonio firefighters with a man's safety hanging in the balance. Friends of his called 911 before 6 this morning after he took a tumble into this manhole near I-10 in Colorado. Uh, first units got on scene and determined he was between 15 and 20 feet straight down. Rescue crews got to work from above, shutting down traffic on the highway to set up their rig. With a ladder and ropes, they set up a system to help him. To send the rescuers down and to get the patient out of the hole, um, that was going to be the fastest, most efficient way to get him out. They believe he went in, hoping to reach a spot where homeless people often camp out. Firefighters say overnight rainwater flooded out the usual entry point. Firefighters say it looks like that man was trying to climb down in this manhole to get to a place where he could be warm and dry, but they believe that's when he slipped and fell. After a lot of effort, though, they saw success. Rescuers carefully pulled him from the hole and placed him on a stretcher. He was visibly uncomfortable, suffering from what firefighters say was a leg injury. It, uh, it's variable. Uh, it's not something we do on a daily basis, but it's something our technical rescue team trains for very often. That training appeared to pay off. The man was taken to a hospital, but is expected to be okay. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's talk to you about a, a traffic situation right now, 610. You're looking at uh, 35 at Cesar Chavez, and you could see all of those uh, the lanes there on southbound lanes. Yeah, a little backed up right there, but, you know, it's not looking all that great either on the north side. I mean, traffic is flowing. It's just going extra slow. It looks like police just uh, pulled over a few vehicles on the southbound lanes, and that's kind of causing some rubbernecking. People are stopping, but, yeah, just be aware of that. Coming up, a trip down memory lane in a San Antonio neighborhood that's not what it once was. All right, so there's a lot that we're working on for you tonight. Here's a look at what we're doing for the night beat. She's a mother who battled drug and alcohol addiction, and as a result, Child Protective Services stepped in. Tonight, the long path that that mother endured to bring her little girl home. That and so much more tonight on the night beat. And now for tonight's History Untold, the story of Kenwood. This is a neighborhood that's bordered on the east and west by McCullough and San Pedro to the north and south by Wildwood and Almost Drive. And tonight, Jesse Degollado shows us Kenwood through the eyes of two old friends visiting this old neighborhood that borders one of San Antonio's wealthiest communities. The homes in Almas Park are as beautiful and stately as they were back when many of the servants and their families lived on the other side of McCullough Avenue in substandard shotgun houses like these on the west side. The homes in Kenwood are much nicer now, yet before urban renewal, this was considered a blighted area with its shotgun houses and unpaved streets. Dee Goforth and Dorothy Sawyers remember what Kenwood was like in the 40s and 50s when Sawyers was born and raised in this small house. It was only three rooms uh -huh. and no bathroom. Oh. It was outside. Standing at the corner of where her house once was, Goforth says their school looked like much of the neighborhood. That school was like a shotgun house. Huge, very large, wooden frame, leaning to the side. What's here now, they say, is thanks to urban renewal and the activism of Kenwood residents appealing to city leaders and decision makers. No, they moved. Their parents may have worked for wealthy, almost part families, but they had high expectations for their children. They didn't expect for us to fail. You had to succeed. The daughter of a baggage handler and a housekeeper, Sawyers became a plans and data specialist at USAA. Goforth, a PhD in chemistry teaching at St. Phillips, says her mom cleaned houses before rising through the civil service ranks at Kelly Air Force Base. Despite their humble beginnings, they say their parents always provided the basic necessities. What else did you need, okay? So, and, and people that loved you. This was a community, she says, and it still is. The reunion is on Kenwood's Facebook page. It has made me appreciate where I am today because I know where I came from. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. I love that story. A lot of I, memories there. Yes, yeah. yes, and I love that they're, they're just telling us there's so much history here. Awesome. Okay, now we are... 
Here's Sky 12, and you're getting a closer look here. Well, maybe a faraway look <laughs> at, the, at our river walk there, which is green, of course, for St. Patty's Day. Yeah, so we got a lot of things planned for this weekend, Adam Kasky, but the rain and possible snowflakes. Are we still talking about that? White yeah. rain? M mainly a cold, cold rain and then a little bit of white rain mixed in. Yeah, that's what I like to call it because it's not going to have it's going to have the same impact as rain. Let's get right to it with our rain chances and notice late tonight through tomorrow morning, 70%. So pretty widespread coverage. We get into Sunday morning, another 40% shots of some scattered action and the same goes for Monday. This is good. Remember, we need the rain. It's just going to be a cold rain out there. Let's talk about the setup. So the cold front we had last night, that's moved through. It's pushed through our area. It's out of here, but now we've got this cooler air in place here at the ground. Up above us, some energy and moisture coming in from the Pacific. It's riding over northern Mexico at the moment, and the, up, the upper level flow is pushing it over our area, and this is going to help set up a narrow band of rainfall of light to even moderate at times rainfall and it's going to start off to the west along the Rio Grande later this evening and then tonight spread eastward. This is 11 p.m. Then you get to midnight becomes more widespread around San Antonio and we'll see these areas of rain coming and going through this band through the night and even into the morning hours tomorrow. Now here's the thing we talked about the white rain. That's what I like to call it. Yeah, mixed in with the rain. We could have some wet snowflakes and that's mainly northern San Antonio and especially into the hill country. I think it's pretty likely in the hill country. Some of the uh, snowflakes could mix in with the rain, but even on the north side of San Antonio it wouldn't surprise me if around sunrise tomorrow morning you notice some wet snowflakes mixing in, but melting on contact with the ground, especially where we see a little pocket of heavier rain set up that could help that situation out a little bit more in terms of seeing some of that uh, ooh ah type of snow. But again, no impact from it. This is sunrise and then we get after sunrise and the rain starts to taper off. And by the noon hour, most of it's coming to an end afternoon, just cloudy. You can get back outside. Hill country, you could have a little frosting on the grass in some parts of the hill country. Not everybody, but some locations could have that light little frosting briefly on the grass around sunrise. Wet roads, not white roads. That's the key here. Everything's just going to be wet. Ground temperatures are going to be above freezing. Our air temperature here at the ground will be above freezing all morning, all day tomorrow. But remember, it still can snow even though temperatures are above freezing. It's really more of a representation of the temperatures higher above us in the sky. Bottom line, no travel impacts, no impacts from any flakes that may happen to mix in with the rain. Just more of one of those interesting factors and unique factors here considering it's mid-March. Overall, good rainfall expected. This is just one computer model, but I, you know, notice how it indicates between a half and nearly an inch of rain along Highway 90. Let's hope that verifies. We could obviously use that rain. So 37 in the morning, 7 a.m. with that 70% chance. By noon, down to a 40% chance and temperature of only 45 degrees. Into the afternoon, wouldn't surprise me if we squeezed in a little bit of sun, making it up to 50 degrees. Sunday morning, we do it all over again. Some scattered rain, just not as widespread. And another cool day, 40 in the morning, 52 in the high. So often on dampness this weekend and Cool, chilly all weekend long. Temperatures rebound, but it's going to take a while. Monday, we're only at 48 for the high, and by Tuesday, we're back in the 60s. Wednesday of next week, this little cool down's all a distant memory with temperatures well into the 70s. But get ready for a lot of fog and drizzle as we get into next week, so we're not going to have bright sunshine anytime soon. Feels like a good weekend for movies. Indoors. Yes. Maybe the Oscars flicks that we didn't see. <laughs> and hot chocolate. Mm. Maybe that's just my thing. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what, in 39 minutes? Yep. The Spurs are up? Yep. Taking on the Memphis Grizzlies. Yes. And uh, we really want to keep an eye on Devin Vassell. Mm -hmm. He's coming back from that knee procedure, and he just quite hasn't found his rhythm just yet. I mean, he has some good moments. He has some bad, but Zach Collins isn't worried about him. And the NFL, Dak Prescott, is clearly bummed out about Ezekiel Elliott coming up.
Warriors host the Grizzlies tonight. Guard Devontae Graham won't go because of left quad soreness and Romeo Langford is out due to left adductor injury management. Shooting guard Devin Vassell will play in his sixth game since returning from a knee procedure. His rhythm isn't back yet, but Zach knows he'll find it. Yeah, I think he's done a good job. I mean, he, the kid works so hard, man. He's in here every day, off days. Um, you know, they got to pull him off the court. They got to kind of save him from himself because he wants it so bad. So he's uh, he's doing great, man. And here's center Charles Bassey with his left leg and a soft cast after he suffered a non-displaced fracture in his left patella Tuesday night versus the Magic, and he is done for the season. Spurs and Grizzlies will play tonight at 7. Highlights on the night beat. KBD is questionable with left Achilles soreness. Turning to March Madness, number one Houston barely beat number 16 Northern Kentucky 63-52 last night in the first round of the Midwest region. The Norse were down three at halftime and made it 36 all with less than 16 minutes left in the game, but the Cougs found a way to survive and advance with their leading scorer Marcus Sasser riding the bench in the second half. Sasser started and he scored five points, but he aggravated a groin injury in the first half, so he was benched out of precaution. I would have been fine if Marcus had decided not to play uh, tonight, uh, but he wanted to give it a try because he thought he was at a high enough percentage of 100 that he could go. So obviously he didn't feel like he, he got out there and didn't feel like he could. So he shut it down, which is the right thing to do. With or without Sasser, number one Houston will next play number nine Auburn tomorrow night at 610. The Dallas Cowboys plan to re-sign backup quarterback Cooper Rush to a two-year deal with up to $6 million per reports. As for QB1, Dak Prescott, he's struggling with the fact the Cowboys released running back Ezekiel Elliott. Both of them were drafted by the boys in 2016. Yeah, tough. Uh, yeah, it really is. Uh, it's tough. Uh, a brother, uh, playing the game with a brother, being able to, 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 to start this NFL career and uh, share, share so many memories and um, grow up as men, grow up as men uh, with, throughout the, with this organization. I really can't imagine taking the field without him. Uh, something I don't know if it's completely hit me yet. The NFL's all-time leading rusher and Cowboys great Emmitt Smith took to social media to criticize the boys for cutting Zeke, saying in part, wow, this is amazing to me, and the NFL stands for not for long. UTSA baseball is off to a great start as they get ready to open Conference USA play tonight. The Roadrunners are 15 and three overall and winners of seven straight. During that win streak, they've averaged 13.57 runs per game and produced 10 plus runs in five of those seven games. Lately we've been hitting, but we've been pitching well all year. Yeah, so we can improve the defense. There's always room for improvement everywhere, but uh, you know, to answer your question, I like the pitching and uh, we're always hunting to get better. You know, we're feeling great. Obviously, 15-3 and three is a great way to start the year. You know, like every team, we probably feel like uh, those three losses, maybe we could have won those games too, you know, but I'm sure every team feels that way, that some of the losses could have gone could have gone a different way. But obviously, 15 wins in the first 18 games is something special, and so we're feeling fantastic to start the year for sure. UTSA is hosting Florida Atlantic in a three-game homestand, and game one is underway. Thank you very much. And after the break, we've got a nice treat for you. It's the weekend, and for a lot of people, spring break in San Antonio is going to be winding down, but doesn't mean that it's not going to be super busy. In fact, our favorite influencer is here with us, and she's going to talk to us about what's happening around the Alamo City. Get excited. Come on. It's Friday. It's the end of the week. Time to celebrate. It's St. Patty's Day. Lots of people are out there partying today, but there is so much going on this weekend. Yeah, there is a lot of fun to be had. Of course, spring break winding down. Yep. So we're going to talk about it all with our favorite influencer who joins us as you have been most Friday, Stephanie Guetta, whose account yep. rhymes with Puro Flinche. That's what <laughs> we're still sticking go. with, right? I think you nailed it, Maida. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> I've been working on it for weeks. Okay, so first thing up. The Pachanga de San Patricio. Explain what that's all about. So obviously today is St. Patrick's Day, but at the Tobin tomorrow we'll be celebrating. There is a huge Irish-Mexican connection because mm -hmm. a lot of Irish people were in Mexico years ago as refugees. Um, and so they're celebrating Dia de San Patricio, mm -hmm. which is St. Patrick's Day in Spanish. Free folk 
punk rock music headlined by Piñata Protest. Um, we also have Angelica Ruiz, Declan McLaughlin, Los San Patricios, and we also have traditional Irish dancing going on at the Tobin Center, and it's free for everybody. Ooh, so free. a nice a nice little mix there. Yes. Also <laughs> happening tomorrow, we have the Cesar Chavez Art Days with some local artists, so tell us about that. I'm really excited about this. So um, this is a new thing for the Cesar Chavez Foundation here in San Antonio. They are having their Art Days at the Mission Marquee with local artist Rudy Herrera and the Masa Collective. Um, that's their real name. And so this is going to be actually like poster making, art making, and celebration and celebration in the spirit of Cesar Chavez leading up to the annual march that's right here in San Antonio next Saturday. Right. So you'll get two weekends and then tomorrow they're actually going to also screen the Cesar Chavez movie so you can watch that for free out at the Mission Drive-In Theater. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun for everyone to get involved, get activated, and remember why we have the rights that we do today when it comes to labor and workers. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so maybe <laughs> if you're not into St. Patty's Day or you're getting your fill today, there's something else happening, which I think sounds pretty cool, the Her Story Project. Yes. What is this about? So we're still in Women's History Month, That's right? Yes. Glad we're all here tonight. Um, and so local photographer Bria Woods, she is have, having her project, um, the Her Story Project, Chapter Three, and she's actually hosting a, a community storytelling event Saturday night at the Carver Community Center. So it's great because she has a lot of local women leaders, and this is based on how you find rest, right? We're always so busy, we're hustling, we're moving, we need to actually take care of ourselves um, physically, mentally, and find some rest so we can be creative and work and do all of those things. So she has an amazing photography and storytelling event. She is a local photographer for a, another muse, media outlet here in town, um, but I'm excited to see it. She's been having great events this year. She had chapter two last year, and she's an amazing budding photographist, photography student and actual journalist, sorry. She does all the things right here in San Antonio. <laughs> I love, she probably needs some rest like she the rest does. of us. Yes, she does, she does. I do. Yeah. And we I love do. that, I love that already. I think we're already getting to that part in the year where you know, you're know you all energized when the year starts and then you go, yeah. oh, I'm tired. Now maybe it's because we've There's been with the kids more spring months break. There's 11 more spring yes. break? I know. <laughs> this is a hard hard week for and, all of us. And that event, by the way, the, opens door, the, the doors open at five o'clock and the event itself starts at six o'clock. Yes, okay. yes. All right, so let's move on here because also we're not done with events that are happening tomorrow. We have the Lowrider Super Show at Freeman Coliseum. Yeah. All right. So I know San Antonio knows about this, right? Lowrider Magazine, it's been around for decades, big part of our culture here in San Antonio. I still love to see Lowriders cruising around town every weekend. So tomorrow there is an actual Super Show at the Freeman Coliseum. Paul Wall, he is a famous Texas rapper. He's gonna be there. Trainer, Trainer is from the freestyle days and the 80s music. I mean, I grew up listening to her. Um, there's gonna be a whole great lineup of vendors, artists, obviously low riders. It's gonna be a really, really fun event. And I think San Antonio will show up because that is our cultura. Okay, so there's another <laughs> event on your list that I know Stefania is excited about. Yes. And you are taking part in this. So this is the Influencer Paella Challenge. Yes. What does that mean for you? Oh, I have to cook. <laughs> that, was, that was a big sigh. Yes. But thankfully, I will have the help of my friend, Chef Edward Garcia, who owns Box Street all day in Hemisphere mm -hmm. Park. So Chef Johnny Hernandez has an annual paella challenge every year. All the chefs in San Antonio come together, high school culinary students come together, there's scholarships awarded, really fun challenge. We are going to do an influencer paella challenge next Tuesday at La Gloria Brooks. So they're pairing us with local chefs, putting us to the test and see what kind of paella we can come up with and make together. And then y'all have to come out and support me, right? Cause there's four <laughs> other people I'm up against and I need some votes, some help. And this is Tuesday at what time? Tuesday from 5 to 8 p.m. So you can come over right after work, join us, check out the new La Gloria if you haven't yet. Beautiful south side venue, new restaurant, it's amazing, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. So How, have you ahead. already been <laughs> brainstorming what your recipe is gonna be, or is this like a top chef situation <laughs> where it's just um, ready, set, go? Me and Chef Ed have talked on the phone and he has a lot of ideas. I think he is, a little bit of both, likes to plan and then also comes up with some crazy things. Uh -huh. um, so I'm excited to see what we do on Tuesday, but I can't give away any spoilers. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, but, yep, but I'm good. just curious whether you've also been practicing. 
with paella. Because paella can be a little bit tricky. It's got to be the right temperature. Sometimes the, right, the rice is a little her. mushy. I will say I've eaten a lot of paella in that my is life. That's the kind of okay. that I like. I okay. support that. Um, and it is very hard to actually execute it. So you'll have to come on Tuesday and find out. You've got a teammate Yay. with chef in his name. You're yeah, good. exactly. It's exactly. going to be a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of great influencers that are part of the challenge, and they're bringing some of San Antonio's top chefs with us on Tuesday night. And it's free and open to the public, so you can just come and join us. And they will also have discounted tickets for the Paella Challenge next week. Okay, we're excited about that. I Thank you so much. I hope you all can come e sometime. Five yes. to eight. Yes, and good when you're not working. And, even if not, and also save us a plate. Yeah. Yes, all right. I will. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, as always. I'm excited. Y'all have a great weekend. You Thank too. Thank you, you too. We'll be right back.